Top Trader is brought to you by Sanlam iTrade and powered by Pyrrhus, now with a new Iris trading platform. the conversation on Twitter. Our Twitter handle at TopTraderTV and please use the hashtag hashtag TopTrader2012. You can also visit www.toptradertv.coza. Saul has ousted fellow Cape Tonian to claim top position while Gary has traded his way past promise reclaiming a top three position. The day starts in the boardroom with Narina. She introduces the concept of exchange traded products on the stock exchange. We're going to be talking about exchange traded products and I will be differentiating between ETFs and ETNs being exchange traded funds versus exchange traded notes. And you'll see that although they sound very similar, there's actually quite a big difference between those two products. An exchange traded note is a contract made by an issuer to pay the holder a return. The return may be linked to, for example, an interest rate, the performance of one or more shares, an index, an exchange rate, or a commodity. An exchange-traded fund is basically a listed unit trust. The index-based investment's performance is based on its correlating index or asset. It's one of the safest, cheapest, and best investment vehicles for retail investors. Very importantly, although ETFs have a derived price structure, in other words, the price or the value of the ETF is based on the value of the underlying basket of shares, it is not a derivative. So it's not a derivative like a future or an option, and when it comes to sort of the regulations of who's allowed to invest in these, who's allowed to sell them also from an from advisor point of view, they are not derivatives, and it actually means that they are available to a much larger audience um, in terms of investors. Flows into ETFs have grown significantly since its launch in Canada in 1993. 38 ETFs are on offer in the South African market and 20 ETNs. An ETF will give you the performance of the underlying index. So it's going to give you the same return, say for example the top 40. If it's an ETF that tracks the top 40 index, it's going to give you the same return as the top 40. So you don't necessarily know what absolute return you're going to be getting because it depends on where the market is. But you do know that you will get the same return as the index, so your relative risk or your relative performance to that index is very, very low. Probably from your point of view, the most important aspect is the fact that there's no securities transfer tax payable on ETFs and ETNs. Sorry, on ETFs in particular. That is a 0.25% tax which is levied on all purchases on the JSE. But because you are trading here in a trust, in participatory unit in a trust, there's no STT payable. Why would we want to limit ourselves to only the listed ETFs when us as traders could go and make our own basket of equities? I'm going to come to that because I see I knew this, can I do it myself <laughs> question is going to come up. Of course you can do it yourself. Is it a good idea to do it yourself? Well, that's a different story. Let's take the example of investing in the top 40 shares that we've got. And I took the example of investing in 100,000 Rand worth of the top 40. You can go and you can buy the individual shares that make up the top 40 shares. You would have to pay brokerage on each of on, on the total amount basically. So using a brokerage rate of 0.5%, that's how much your brokerage will cost. Then you've got to pay JSE fees and levies on every single trade that you do. So the costs are literally 40 times what they would be compared to trading in a single entity. The STT is also payable on the full 100,000 Rand, and it leaves you out of the 100,000 <coughs> with about 2.3% of costs to invest in that. Contrast that with trading in an ETF, <coughs> where your brokerage is the same, but you're buying just one trade, much lower there, and no STT, so about half the costs. So you can see that although you can do it yourself, 
it's certainly not the most cost efficient way to do it because this is using an example of a hundred thousand rand to invest where it costs you 2.3 percent the lesser the amount that you have to invest the bigger that factor becomes. in fact <coughs> if you've got only 10,000 rand to invest it's going to cost you more than 10 percent to buy each of the 40 shares in the top four up to now, the contestants have been free to trade without limitations. For example, they haven't had to take into account limitations on volumes or trading costs. To bring them closer to the real world, Narina changes the rules of the game. Firstly, in addition to companies listed on the All Share Index, contestants may now trade in exchange-traded products, ETFs and ETNs. Because the contestants have had no limitations on trading volumes, many of them have been trading unrealistically. This will now be limited to reflect the actual liquidity of the shares. And lastly, the traders must take costs into account and they will now be charged trading fees. You're charging us rates as if we were just the average person on the block with a broker, but surely you should be giving us the rates of being a registered company? Would, would you like a tissue? <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Jared, you're absolutely right, but the same rule applies to everybody. Okay. So, whether uh, you all get charged 10% or 0.5% or 0.1%, you're all going to get the same rate charged. Are you guys going to consider, just because with ETFs, it might be nice to be able to take the buy a bunch of the ETF and then short the dogs. So if you could consider allowing shorts in the future. I think maybe we'll start with these three sets of changes this time round. Maybe if you're still around for the next round, who knows? <laughs> Might actually find that some people want to short you. So. <laughs> I'm quite long. <laughs> It was once again time to face Narina and Karat for one-on-one -on -one feedback on the progress of their performance. I saw that you do a lot of technical analysis, all of you guys, and you did the technical analysis course, but I think it's pretty time consuming to have to go through 100 or 200 charts and to see is there a head and shoulders or is there a tri triangle or a wedge. There's also there's an art in identifying them. Um, so we've got uh, a thing called auto charters that actually scans the market in real time and identifies those patterns for you. Talk to us about Uliman. Was it a reactive almost price um, action that made um, you trade in it? Lots of the shares I find is from watching the biggest movers of the okay, day. Okay, okay. So I hadn't actually, that wasn't on my watch list. That's okay, a, okay. And that's increased 15% that yo. day. Huliman, hello, welcome okay. to the watch list. In the end, it's actually been very good. I've actually averaged 22,000 Rand profit a day from the last time we were here. Um, I made my best share buy and my worst share buy in, in this time period. My worst being Harmony. I, I got stop lost out at 3,000 Rand loss. Yeah. And I made my best buy was um, I was um, following Huliman with technical oh, charts, yeah. yes. and um, on Thursday afternoon I bought into them with a with a potential gain. What I expected was to make four or five percent. That was my target, and in the morning it went up eighteen percent. So I made yeah. a fifty-one thousand rand profit off them. So I was I was thrilled that that happened the day before we come to Johannesburg, and I actually wanted to send the directors flowers. I haven't been trading as often as I have in recent months, but I mean this past week I. I made a sizable amount, so I made like 15,000, so that's not too bad. And that was down to the fact that I'd been so patient. I mean, I mentioned, okay. I mentioned the fact that I'd been monitoring some prices, and the, in fact, the 12,000 I made on one share was of, of one of those shares that I was watching in my separate watch list. So Excellent. I'm, well done. I'm a bit yeah, proud of that. But I am trying to move up. I really do want to start moving up and um, playing in the medium size. Okay. Um, stocks. I do really want to try my luck out there up and see, the yeah, up my game and see yeah. because I mean, if I can, it will. Right now, I mean, the ba I'm trading. I'm holding for no no longer than two days, 
And I mean, sometimes it's even intraday, I get in in the morning and get out. Tell me about Uleman. It was mostly a, a, a technical trade that you did there. Yeah. Um, and yet a lot of the price movement came on the back of corporate action or yeah. the, the announcements that was out of the yeah. market. Do you feel that this has given you a good idea of how by watching the prices to actually tell you or almost give you an indication yeah. of what might be coming actually worked out very successfully yeah. for you? I was telling a friend of mine that I don't actually see the way in which I entered this program and the way I see stocks now is two, two totally different yeah. people. Like I see pr price movements as information. It's always just yeah. information. People telling me what they're willing to pay, what yes. they're not willing to pay. So even though it was on the back of corporate action, I knew from the way people were treating the price that something was, something was, was popping. Yeah. Yes. I agree that you traded a lot more during the first week after we saw you and then mm -hmm. It seems like your wheels fell off again last week and you tried well, the discovery, but uh, nothing else. So. <laughs> it was because I had all my money in discovery okay. and I was waiting okay. for the results to come okay. out. Okay. And uh, I mean, a couple of moves, but you know, I only had so much money to work yeah. with. Um, I think I made a couple of trades. Um, I beefed up my first rand stake because you know I can't resist first rand. Absolutely. It's like an ex-girlfriend. My mm. first prize at the moment, I'm targeting top three. I want to be in that final. Once, oh, I, get well, to, once I get to the final, my next target is, is to take the, the top challenge. Oh. I have a, a slight um, challenge, but it, I'm going to get around this, in that um, in the next month, it is all the Jewish festivals, which means I'm forbidden to trade seven out of 21 trading days. Um, I'm forbidden to even touch the computer. So seven days you're going to see blank screens for me, but that's part of any trader's Absolutely. life. And, and those seven days I won't trade and the rest of the days I'm just going to have to, yeah. to trade. Not, I don't want to trade harder because then you, yeah. you'd be yeah. stupid. I want to be sensible. I want to be very, very sensible with this. And everything I've done is trying to be as calculated as I can and careful. Because not only are you looking for the person who's achieved the highest returns, and hopefully I um, have achieved good returns, I know and I'm very proud of them. But more important to me, am I some that please God one day somebody's going to trust me with their money. If being right or being um, sort of vindicated in terms of your views is more important than actually making the money on the trade, mm. you will probably continue to lose money or not do as well as you could if you became less emotionally involved and committed to your trade. So maybe less ex-girlfriends, more mistresses, not sure, but uh, <laughs> I think it's, th and that's a choice that you have to make. You know, this is not about what's right or wrong. It's just understanding the consequences of trading on a certain view or a certain um, pattern.